What's up? How, how excited are you for this game? And, and not to disrespect Rutgers, but you're a 50-some point favorite. There's a reasonable chance you'll get to play a decent chunk of the game. How excited are you? I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I think the thing I'm most excited about is I have a large group of family and friends who um, can't always make it out here to Ohio for games. So I'm excited to have them there to uh, see me play. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to prepare for Rutgers like we do for every, 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 everyone else we play, you know, each, each, each Saturday. So definitely looking forward to it. How many tickets? <laughs> Still working on it. I um, actually just came from that. The number keeps growing, I think. Um, probably right now, <laughs> I have a, a few more people asking, so we'll see. Probably get them cheap. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a number yet. Um, not people that are asking, probably upwards of 60, but 70. But there's also a lot of people who are probably just going to end up buying tickets because it's definitely a, t a tall order for me. Chris, uh, this past game was, I think, maybe the most you've got to throw the ball since you've been here. Yeah. Um, and I think some people might have been surprised a little bit by how well you did throw it, especially the one you <coughs> threw that got called back to, to mm. Garrett. But honestly, might have been one of the better thrown balls this year. Like, I, I don't know. H how would you explain your, your throwing ability to, to people who have not seen a lot of it? Um, yeah, I mean, I've always been pretty confident in my throwing ability. You know, I'm, I, I was definitely happy that – I got to sling it, um, sling it around a bit on Saturday. You know, usually sometimes, um, especially er earlier in the season when I have to go in the game, we're kind of just um, trying to kill clock, you know, leave and whatnot. So I haven't always gotten the opportunity to throw it around. But I mean, I'm here because I love <laughs> throwing the football. So I was happy about it for sure. When you, uh, when you graduated from West Virginia, why did you ultimately decide that you wanted to keep playing? Um, I love the game, man. Um, I love playing football. I love throwing the football, too. It's, it's that simple for me. You know, that feeling of throwing like a perfect pass, you know, for the five seconds that I threw that one post up to five, you know, I felt really good. And that's why I, I'm, I'm still playing. And, I, and I'll play for as long as I can. Yeah. Coach Dave mentioned that when you first got here, you had to do some reshaping of your body physically. <laughs> I'm just curious what what that entailed. Uh, if you can remember yeah. That. Um, so I had been away from football for seven, eight months before I got here, and I had a hell of a time. And um, I wasn't in great shape when when I came here. I'll, I'll be I'll be the first to admit that. You know, I, I wasn't like fat or anything, but I was uh, skinny and. When you walk in here and you walk in the locker room here, man, everyone's built like a brick house. So Coach Mick and I, you know, we kind of worked through that um, in, in season last year and then throughout this off season, you know, it's been a, a focus of mine to try to, you know, just be somewhere on the same level as everyone else here. So a lot. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I've been able to add, I mean, shoot, when I walked in the door here, I drove up. I was sitting on the beach for a few months last summer, just hanging out, and I was pretty thin. And then, throughout the course of the time I've been here, I think I've put on about 30 pounds. So, um, you know, that's a testament to Coach Mick and our strength staff and what we do here. And I've also just been eating a whole lot of food. So, uh, far left, Lori. Um, Chris, is your Workload and practice changed at all from the beginning of the season? Are they resting Justin Moore as the year goes along or because he's coming out in the second or third quarter? And um, I wouldn't say so. I mean, our practices are pretty structured and we're fairly consistent with the reps that we have. I mean, Fields is a freak. He doesn't really need much rest, to be honest. So um, I'd say that it's been pretty consistent since uh, preseason, yeah. How challenging is it for you to play with the number of reps that you're being given? I don't know. I mean, that's the way it is when you're the second string QB. You know, you can't always get as many physical reps in practice. You know, I try my best to, um, you know, um, when I'm not in there, um, I try to use my mind, you know, and get those mental reps to be prepared. Um, I look at it as a challenge that I welcome, you know. <laughs> 
So, yeah. Chris, when you got here, it seemed hard to envision that you would have the amount of opportunities you've had this year. You know, you looked at the room and the way it was then, it was like, well, I don't see a path for Chris to play. Has any part of this ever caught you by surprise or you catch yourself thinking, like, this worked out way better than I thought it could? I don't know. I, um, I never really thought about it like that. You know, I just came here and I, I, I planned on doing whatever I could here for Ohio State. And, you know, things shook out the way they did. And um, I'm just grateful for every opportunity I have to play, you know, so. Aside from your, you know, adding that, that 30 pounds, how do you feel like you're a better quarterback now than when you, when you got here? I mean, um, mentally, you know, the way that Coach Day, Coach, Coach um, Yersich, and just the philosophy of our team and our, and our um, offense here, I just feel like I'm so much more mentally prepared, you know, week in and week out. I think my football knowledge has um, skyrocketed since I walked in the door here, what, two years ago? A year ago, actually, shit. Um, and um, I think that's helped me a lot, you know, on the field, yeah, for sure. Second row, Tony. Um, you say it's a great feeling when the ball is in the air, especially the one that, even the one that got called back. Did you get hit, hit on that one? The one that got called back? Yeah. yeah. So you say it's, it's a great feeling, but then, you know, you, you get, get smashed, right? Yeah, I think the pros, that way the cons there. I knew I was going to get smacked, and I had the option to um, – get the ball out of my hands quick and get like three or four yards or hang on to it for a split second longer, get smacked and potentially get whatever it was, like 50 yards and a touchdown. So that's kind of what went through my mind there. Uh, Coach Day said it helps to be sort of creative, mentally creative, because you don't get a lot of reps. And you, you mentioned that. Can you walk us through sort of how that works? Uh, is it like watching a movie? You just sort of picture things? What's the, what's the process? Um, I'd say, like, in, in practice, um, I stand right behind um, Fields when he's taking his reps, and he does the same with mine. That's just kind of the um, culture they have here at Ohio State. So I'll see the play come in, and I'll go through it on my own in, in my head, and I'll go through the reads. And usually, I mean, I could tell you where he's throwing the ball most of the time in the game, you know, um, aside from the times where he uses his legs, and that's what he does, yeah. Other quarterbacks about Justin very much is here. I'm just curious, um, from a like a football IQ standpoint, what impressed you the most about him? He just makes really smart decisions. You know, he for being so young and um, he doesn't force the ball, which is huge for someone his age. Um, he he's really confident in his um, athletic ability. So he could hold on to the ball, and he doesn't feel like he has to force it into small um, windows, which, you know, I don't think he's turned the ball over much at all this season, which um, is huge, and it's in our plan to win. So, I mean, he's just a smart young player, and he's a freak. So, What sense do you get from him in meetings? I mean, does he think about the game, see the game at an advanced way for yeah. being that young? Yeah, yeah, for his age, and I mean, just the way the coaches prepare here um, and the way they have us prepare, you know, he has no choice. But, yeah, I mean, he's just a smart young dude and the sky's the limit. Chris, like, I just want to go back to the Wisconsin game. And it's 10 to 7, and Justin has to come out the game. And, like, as a backup quarterback, you're not written, that's just, like, your reps are limited because of that. Like, what's the person that's going through your head when you see he has to come out the game and all of a sudden you're probably taking your most important snaps as a buck guy? Yeah, I mean, I was hoping they'd let me um, throw him downfield, but um, had to settle for the screen. Um, nothing really went through my head, you know. It's just like, oh, he came out with his helmet, and now I have to go in and and, and, uh, and um, make a play. Sorry. I, my buddy just, just made a funny face out there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you don't really have a lot of time to – to think about it. So, like, how are you staying mentally ready over the last few weeks? Like, it's been happening. Like, yeah, like, what has happened? It's been staying aware of that from Michigan home, so you're throwing yeah. in there. I mean, this time of year, my biggest challenge is staying warm on the sidelines. So, you could usually <laughs> see me, you know, um, humbled up and whatnot. But um, I think I always stay 
I'm mentally ready. I don't really know how. It's just something I've learned over my hundred years playing college football. Do you feel like in the locker room would be a situation where you have to do that? Do you feel like you can go in there and handle things pretty well? Absolutely, yeah, 100%. And last set of questions, Dan, right behind. Chris, just what does it mean for you to kind of get these opportunities that you're getting to come in and play when you talked about it a year ago? This might not have happened for you. It's awesome, man. I love playing football, and you know, I'm fortunate to have a bunch of really talented players around me, even there at the end of the game, you know, having five and six that they're on the outside, you know, it's fun. It's a whole lot of fun. What, is, what do you think are the biggest things that you'll kind of take away from this experience that you maybe you wouldn't have had if you hadn't made this decision to come here? I don't know, that's pretty deep, man. I, um, I'll, I'll probably have to get back to you on that. I'm just fortunate to be here right now, and i um, excited with where this team is uh, heading. Fields is a freak. What, you're a fellow quarterback. What what does that mean? What are what are what are you in your mind? What does a freak at quarterback? Well, he's just define it. He's just physically like a freak. I think if you look up freak on Google, I mean, it's just gonna say like he's just not the same. So I mean, yeah. physically he can make all the throws. He's fast. He's athletic. You know, he's one of the fastest guys on the team. I think, and. Um, you know, he's exciting to watch. He's exciting to practice with and uh, play with. And he's also just a super cool dude. Thank you, Chris. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe below to get the latest videos from Letterman Row. We've got Letterman Live. We've got the practice report. we got rapid reaction. Hey, and you know we got Buckeye Q with Zach Bourne. For sure. we got recruiting breakdowns with Berm. we got whatever you need. Ohio State football and Ohio State athletics, we've got you covered here at Letterman Row.